Welcome back to the channel everyone, another special video, we get to finally talk about the Nintendo GameCube and what's funny is I made a video about the specific console I think back in 2017 or 2018 and then for some reason I think I privated the video or I deleted it or for something, I don't know what I did or maybe it's still up and I wasn't looking at it right but we're going to be revisiting this console and seeing how it holds up in 2020. Now this thing actually came out in 2001 so this year it'll actually be turning 19 years old which is very very insane and I think the life of the Nintendo GameCube is very interesting because for some reason this console I just don't even think it's that old you know some consoles you can kind of look at and be like yeah that's a super old console you know consoles like the Nintendo 64 the PlayStation 1. Sometimes I even look at the original Nintendo DS. I'm like, that's a really old console, even though the GameCube is older than that. It was just something about the GameCube that was almost timeless in a way. And I have so much respect for, you know, Nintendo for releasing this console. It was super cool. Now, I do have the black one, but I think most people know the blue one. That was like the most like popular one at the time. And what's funny is the GameCube actually kind of turned into a meme, not the GameCube itself, but the startup logo. If you guys remember like last year, two years ago, there was like this meme of like the GameCube's like startup boot up logo. And it was like the thing making of the cube. And then people would like do something dumb when the cube jumps up in the air and hits the ground or something. If you guys know what I'm talking about, then like let me know in the comment section. But so the GameCube was pretty much the successor to the Nintendo 64. And shout out to Nintendo.Fandom.com. I'm looking at the article or whatever their wiki while I'm talking about this video. And Nintendo actually first mentioned the Nintendo 64 back in 1999 and then it was eventually released two years later and it was supposed to be competing with the PlayStation 2 and kind of the PlayStation 1 I guess in a way but they both kind of came out at the same time so you know it's totally okay. Now when you're looking at the GameCube you can kind of see that it does kind of look a lot like the Nintendo 64 and not in the sense of like it actually looking like it but the front you know the area you can plug in the controllers and stuff it kind of looks the same a little bit that might be a little bit of a reach if I'm being honest but maybe Maybe, I don't know, that's kind of like a reach, but you have four controller ports in the front so you can connect your controllers up to the front if you want to, which is really, really cool. You had game card slots in the front as well, which was really awesome. I think that's something that, you know, these game manufacturers really started pushing just to make way more money off these consoles and they would make them certain sizes. I mean, it's just like SD cards nowadays, but it's really, really smart. We saw Sony do it. We saw Microsoft do it. And now they, we pretty much all have built in hard drives and everything inside of these consoles. But at this time, you couldn't even store any information in these consoles because you know because you didn't have any memory cards but now you have them and built in which is totally okay now you had fans on the side of the console which is really cool up top we had the reset button and then we also had the disc eject button now what's funny is is that literally before i made this video before i record this audio i went to go find my gamecube and i found it and for some reason when i picked it up i like hit it against the counter or something like that and my game disc ejector actually broke so i don't think i'll be able to show that off pretty well and i was like wow the one time i really wanted to do something like this breaks on me but it's totally okay it's not that big of a deal and on the back of the console this was something that always kind of threw me off you had the video output which looked kind of like an hdmi but it really wasn't it was an av out then you had the analog av out whatever that means and then you had you know the actual power adapter there you know so you can always plug this thing in and get some power that way which is really cool so and then on top of that you actually had a little like then you can actually maneuver this with like a little handle that you can actually go and bring this out with you and if you want to go somewhere you can quickly take it with you on the go or you're to your friend's house or something which is actually a really smart marketing thing from Nintendo to do which is actually really cool and this whole console is built inside of a cube which is so cute in a way if we look at a lot of consoles now actually if you look at the Xbox Series X that's actually kind of in a cube as well so like did Microsoft take some cues from the GameCube from back in the day who knows and the fact that and this is so weird to me the Nintendo Wii was the successor to the Nintendo GameCube is so weird to me because I feel like those are such humongously different consoles you know and the fact that the Nintendo Wii U and the Wii whatever the Switch was the successor to those is really crazy to me too like it's just so weird how like Nintendo kind of reinvents themselves every single time with like the PlayStation 2 to the PlayStation 3 to the PlayStation 4 and with like the Xbox 360 to the 1 to the 1X whatever that kind of makes more sense you know that that's kind of like kind of like flowing a little bit better but with this one it's seems like Nintendo has kind of changed themselves every single time they release a new console and I really do like that you know that's something that's really really awesome so even though sometimes they kind of miss like the Wii U that was kind of a miss at least they kind of did pretty well with the 64 the GameCube and the Wii you know, respectively now one of my main moments and the one things I always remember about the GameCube was Animal Crossing for some reason I barely even played Animal Crossing on this thing but 
the fact that apparently as far as i know you were able to connect to some type of internet connection and actually play those games was actually really really interesting now i don't remember if that was actually the case because that's just kind of something that i remember from back in the day so if i'm totally misspeaking then you guys can let me know but that's actually really really weird too that i just remember something like that now obviously this wouldn't be a gaming console without the games themselves and there were so many different games for this console that it was so insane so back in the day i would sometimes play super smash brothers melee or melee whatever with my friends if i had to stay at their house for like a couple of days one of my friends actually had a gamecube and i was obsessed with this game at the time and i totally forgot about it and i started playing super smash on the switch now which is so weird it's like kind of going full circle but the amount of games for this thing were super awesome and if you guys remember not too long ago this is kind of off topic but kind of on topic at the same time it's not like this console is completely forgotten or people don't play any of these games anymore obviously you have those games for the console itself and i'm sure a lot of people still own the console but the other thing to keep in mind is that you also have emulators that have been playing these games for a very long time dolphin emulator is a huge one and the people who made dolphin actually ported that over to ios and android so you can now actually play wii and gamecube games on those consoles from those consoles onto an iphone or anything like that which is super super awesome so you don't necessarily need to pick up a gamecube to play those games anymore you can just play them straight from your phone which is really cool but you had games like super smash bros mario kart double dash a huge one super mario sunshine people are freaking out about that game and apparently nintendo actually might be remastering that game very very soon so you can actually go and play that game on the nintendo switch which is going to be huge and the graphics for super mario sunshine have always just blown me away the console graphics on that game were super amazing and even when you play that game now they're still really really awesome and you had the legend of zelda wind waker a humongously popular game and their graphics for those games were really really awesome as well and it's funny as you kind of go down the list because i wasn't always because i didn't play the nintendo 64 games that well but it's funny how many games and how many characters you get to know just by playing super smash brothers because star fox adventures i've never played that game but i already kind of know what it's about or at least i know the characters in that game because of super smash bros so the whole gaming aspect of this game for sure is one of my favorite things about it obviously but there are also some mods you can do for the gamecube as well which obviously it wouldn't be a great console if you weren't able to mod it and i I never really looked into it that much but i know there's a lot of mods out there so you can always go and look that up and i would leave some links down in the description for it but i don't want to get this video taken down because sometimes nintendo flags these videos when you talk about it but just like how the wii had you know the homebrew and all that stuff you can install on it i'm pretty sure the gamecube has those as well and i looked into it a little bit but nothing too crazy but again that's just one of those things that i would honestly recommend you to do modifying a console is amazing you know they, it brings a lot of life into the console i modified pretty much my ds with the r4 card i did my 3ds my 2ds modded my switch i modded my wii like it's not a crazy hard process to do but it brings so much life into your console and obviously you do everything legally only do things that are fun and you know are safe and everything but the gamecube would be another one of those consoles that i would 100 percent modify <laughs> and ending it off i mean i have to talk about the controller man and the funny thing is about the controller i just i never really understood it if i'm being honest it was one of those controllers that i would look at it and for some reason it reminded me so much of waligi or waligi whatever his name is it just had like the stems and as the handles always reminded me of his legs which is so funny but if you think about it this controller looks so much like the microsoft xbox controller with the xbox 360 and all those and thankfully they did switch over to a much more i guess friendly design something like the wii with that controller that looks kind of like the pro controller in a way but this controller wasn't that bad either you know it definitely feels pretty cheap now but it doesn't feel like you know outdated you just look at it and be like oh it's the older controller kind of like the iphones oh it's an older iphone same thing with this controller so it's not a bad controller it does feel kind of cheap but at the end of the day it's an old console what do you expect so so to kind of end out the video man the nintendo gamecube is an amazing console i think it still has so much life left in it probably not <laughs> But I think the life that it has was, you know, lived favorably. It brought so many games to the library of gaming that's out there. It brought so many games to the game library out there. Like I said, the Super Smashes, the Mario Karts, the Marios. You even had the Crash Bandicoots and Spyros on this console as well. Man, dude, like there are so many games out for this thing. And for sure, at the end of the day, I'll tell you. 
the mixture of not only graphics but also like the fun playing like the animal crossing and all that it's just such a beautiful console at the end of the day and for sure i'll tell you pick one of these up if you want to you can always play them through the emulators and stuff like that but having the actual console is a little bit different i think in my opinion so that's really pretty much it guys if you have any questions or anything like that let me know in the comment section below hit the like button that would mean so much but definitely hit that subscribe button every single subscriber that we get really does count so it means so much if you guys could hit that also check out the other links down in the description as well my twitter my instagram my second channel all those links are linked down below i'd really appreciate it if you guys could check it out more importantly than everything else i love every single one of you guys hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out